crackling reverberated through the awarding office, a fireplace burned brightly below the opulent station mirror in the centre of the chamber. A dark whisper resounded from the air, piercing the premonition of an ominous tone that the company record player had just been put on a delicate placing of fine needle. He moved the wooden desk at the head of the bay window and looked out at the cold night and picked up a large stack of worn parchment. Paper weighed heavily in his hands as eyes pierced the words on the front of the A4 paper. Article 48. There was a dull boom from the soundtrack by Wagner, Siegfried's funeral march. Echoed the herald of the new dawn. The act of the Weimar Constitution that threatened adults' ambitions to such a degree that it had to be destroyed. Movement delayed as he glided slowly towards the fireplace and looked deeply into the fire. The socialist revolutionary as he saw himself, had pleaded with the present Paul von Hindenburg to dissolve the Reichstag and call for a new parliamentary election. The date set for the election was the 5th of March, 1933. But first he had to remove all communist opposition to this cause. The paper waved with his hand. This act, he thought, would be the beginning of a new order. He dropped it. Into the, the, as the manuscript thudded into the fire and it started to spread with amazing alacrity. His mind began to swamp with the fumes from the fire that began to spread across the walls from the fireplace and upwards. A crescendo was approaching with the enclosed furniture and room. Musical decoration boomed. By reinstating the enabling act in place of Article 38, he might achieve this, but communication was key. He thought back to his time spent in prison after the first threat of revolution in 1922. More specifically, he thought back to his book he had written during that jail time, Mein Kampf, by Adolf Hitler. Told of his political motivations and plan for a unified Germany, it would publish throughout the father and would absorb the entire population with his insight and will. His will. Music bounced off the walls and spun off the fine pictures of Karl Kaisers they would be obsolete and burned away into the night. Chancellor! Chancellor! A guard stormed outside while smelling the fragrant of burning and Adolf turned to shoot him. I shall save you. He muttered as he looked at the players. I shall save you all. The KPD was dead as of his day, he thought. Long live the Nazi. He reached for his hat and walked out of the side door, leaving the right step to burn and his future to rise. Detained under Section 43 of the Terrorism Act on the 40th of May 2017, Eddie Mitchell was just another example of freedom of communication being restrained today reasonably suspected of being a terrorist, and this way was searched and detained under the Terrorism Act. I respect wholeheartedly that the police have a job to do, Mitchell said, but there should be a clarity on people taking pictures in a public place. It's not a crime. As far as I'm concerned, it's a total misuse and abuse of power. Just another instance of subversion of communication, while the subversive indoctrination seeps among us like an eel in the dark of political agenda, while a German book on communication has been written for children in 2003, has now been published and slated by Marxists and Leninists. Mobile phones and other forms of public communication are not only being hacked by governmental agencies, it's also been reported in 2017 that groups of Mancunian motorcyclists have been snatching such devices from public hands while walking the streets, it seems with alarm and immunity. Despite all this, disregard for freedom of speech and proper decorum with the populace, the propaganda of electoral desperation resides peacefully within an aura of acceptance. Not only does European Commission President Jean Paul Juncker declare, slowly but surely, England is losing importance in Europe at a conference in Florence. But this revelation strikes the perceptive of us as nothing of a surprise today. The rise in Hitler's new age is reflected in Jeremy Corbyn's struggle to vote his way. Tapping into the unvoted pursuit that seems to make 
little difference in the fight towards the 8th of June, as the Tories seem to have won over most of the seats through their disregard for their own rules. For instance, Declaration 27 of the Pensions Act says there must be a decision made on benefits issued by the DWP by May 2017. But this decision cannot be made until after the general election. Yet another instance of communication is not being verified and adhered to by the government today. Theresa May isn't even following the simple road to power that Hitler determined when he burned down the Reichstag to instate the Enable Act. With serious concerns being addressed by the EU over the state of the system in the UK and investigations carried at the continuance of the Investigatory Powers Bill to be ignored is still retained. Our NHS is crumbling. There are bloated immigration centres expounding to an obese extent. Child poverty is abhorrent. Food banks are seen as a valid recourse for the maintenance of the individual and communication is a dirty word if not utilised by a fascist body. Only a few months ago, it was reported that the cabinet was doing little to bring Brexit sceptics, the 48%, back into the natural conversation, preferring instead to let the tabloids do their dirty work. They have allowed our police to breach our liberty through the release of DVDs and surveillance tapes, only fining £150,000 in a response, a precautionary measure to secure votes that sacrifice more rights. With Conservatives gaining from UKIP's disintegration, they won more than 10 councils over in the May of 2017, and Paul Nuttall said that the price of Britain leaving the EU is a Tory advance after taking up the patriotic cause, then is the price UKIP is prepared to pay. Lambs for the slaughter. When our enemy of our enemy is wiped out by the oncoming storm, it's time to move on. Though where to has yet to be determined. With the government pushing surveillance on virtually everything today, it seems that there is very little space left for refuge. Even security system recording devices are being considered for mental health patients, a severe infringement on liberty in itself. But then again, they're always not bad with that stuff. Or so it would be if we were a communist government, which we are becoming. It's with mental health policy that Theresa May seems to feel she's most equipped to deal, however. Is anyone surprised, considering her own health? In an event, she has determined to replace the 1983 Mental Health Act with a, a Mental Health Treatment Bill under the auspices of an excuse that finally confronts the discrimination and unnecessary detention that takes place too often. Her flawed reasoning for this is that it is doubling discrimination. In 2014-15, close to 60% of black people in hospital with mental illness were detained, compared to around 40% for white people. So it's a race thing again. With one hand, she subdues the ethnic diversity of an already ailing country, and with the other, the very same issue is an excuse to tamper with legislation that already work fine. Were we, or anyone else, in the healthcare sector consulted in this? Communication. Perhaps a few had the right idea in regards to burning down the system to create a new age. The vision used in such an endeavour back in 1930 was perverse, but the method indicates an anarchy needed today. Perhaps the dictatorship established through means is inevitable. Increase the number of Nazi seats so that the Enable Act, or Article 50, can be instigated to its full potential. Let's hope not. I certainly don't want to see Buckingham Palace burned down. Now that's within the realms of inevitability. In this second series of Retrospective Rooms, I will look at the effects social evolution has had on today's pains. The political machinations of today has recently failed to illuminate and will burn those retrospective rumours insofar as interest is concerned. I wish to examine how our impressions of the past have influenced the way in which we perceive our present through social realisation, inspecting institutions such as pharmaceuticals to enforcement and cultural reactions to them. I wish to find the future. Here goes the last one. The date set for the next one. I love this. Look at that. With an enclosed fur future. Shimmered around her. The subversive in. Get it, boy.